Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how I made this custom wooden name puzzle with my Cricut Maker. My nephew just turned two and he is obsessed with trucks, so I thought it would be awesome if I could make him a truck-shaped puzzle. This was my first time cutting wood with my Cricut Maker, and I knew it was going to be a challenging project. It ended up being even harder than I thought, and I did make a few mistakes along the way. But hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and it will be smooth sailing. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step step. Cricut has a set of basswood that comes in a pack of four 12 by 6 inch sheets that are 1 16th of an inch thick, and they can be cut with the Cricut Maker knife blade. This is what I use to make my puzzle, and this tutorial will give detailed instructions for how to create a puzzle like mine using this exact sizing of basswood. There are links to all of the products I used in the description of this video. You want to start by creating your design in Cricut Design Space. I made this truck design myself, and if you want to recreate it with your own custom name, you can download this file for free on my website. There's a link in the description of this video. Start by uploading the file to Cricut Design Space. You want to resize the image to be 12.5 inches wide. You also need to upload the text of whatever name you're using for the puzzle. You can do this with the text feature right in Design Space, but I like to upload from Canva. I used a font called Norwester, which is tall and skinny, and made sure to add extra space between each letter. Once you've got the name in there, you want to resize it to fit nicely inside the large rectangular piece. The size, of course, will depend on the length of the name you're using. Once you have the name sized and centered on the back of the truck, use the offset feature to create a rounded outline around each letter that's just a bit larger than the original letters. This is what's going to create the holes for the letter pieces to sit inside. If you make them the exact same size, it will be too tight of a fit for the puzzle. Once you have applied your offset, you can change the color if you want just to make it easier to see, and then you can click contour and hide any of the inner pieces inside your letters like I'm doing here with my B, R, O, and D. Next, select both the offset layer and the truck layer, and then click Slice, which will cut the name out of the rectangle. Then you can delete the offset name layers. So now we've made some holes for the letter pieces to fit into on the puzzle. The basswood is thin, so I recommend duplicating the name and cutting out two so that you can glue two of each letter together for more sturdy puzzle pieces. You can also double the front piece of the truck if you want it to stand out a little further. The basswood sheets are 12 by 6 inches, so I made three 12 by 6 rectangles with the shapes tool to help me organize my pieces for cutting. To separate all of the pieces from that original image you downloaded, you can duplicate it and use the contour feature which lets you hide or show whatever parts of the design that you want. I found it easiest to cut the two names on one of the basswood sheets, the back of the truck on another basswood sheet, and the remaining details on the third basswood sheet. The fourth sheet will be the background we glue everything to. Once your pieces are organized onto the three sheets, you can delete the rectangles, select all the detail pieces and unite them so that they stay organized and spaced just like this, and do the same with the two names. Then you can change the colors of the three pieces, which will organize them onto separate cutting mats when you click Make It. Cricut doesn't recommend cutting wood that's wider than 10 inches because it can get caught under the silicone wheels. So I turned my designs vertically on the cutting mats. I used my 12 by 24 inch cutting mats for this to give me some extra wiggle room at the edges. When cutting wood, it's best to use the strong grip cutting mat and tape down the sides so it doesn't move around. Make sure your machine is equipped with a Cricut knife blade and slide these white star wheels all the way to the right side so they don't roll over the wood and leave markings. When you're ready to start the cut, you can load your mat and press the flashing Cricut button. The process to cut the wood takes quite a long time because it does several passes over the wood. As you can see, it's estimating an hour and 15 minutes to finish my cut. I just walked away and worked on something else while it was cutting. When my first cut was done, it looked like this, and I thought it had cut all the way through, but unfortunately it had not. I should have reloaded the mat and ran the cut a second time, but it was too late when I figured it out, so I went over the cut lines by hand with my Cricut True Control knife. 
On the second sheet of basswood, I changed the settings to apply more pressure. It was a bit closer to going all the way through that time, but unfortunately I still had to finish cutting this one by hand. On the third sheet of basswood, I did the same settings again with more pressure and was planning to run the cuts a second time, but for some reason it cut right through on the first run no problem. The pieces were popping out before I even touched it. I don't understand why this happened because I would have expected the blade to get duller by the third sheet, but overall I definitely suggest doing the more pressure setting for your cuts and you'll likely have to run it multiple times to cut all the way through. It's totally possible to finish the cuts by hand, but it's hard work and I went through several blades while doing it. Unfortunately, while cutting by hand, I did end up breaking some of the pieces, but thankfully I had cut two of them to glue on top of each other, which made it really easy to glue them back together. The pieces that were fully cut by the Cricut cut beautifully, but the ones I cut by hand had some jagged edges, so I sanded everything to be nice and smooth. Next, I painted all of the pieces with acrylic paint, and unfortunately, this is where things really took a turn for the worse. I thought the paint looked great and everything was nice and colorful, but unfortunately, the paint made the larger pieces of basswood get super warped. The worst was the background piece and the rectangular back of the truck. When the paint dried, they had these massive curves in them. I googled how to unwarp wood and tried steaming them with my clothing steamer and laying a heavy cutting board on them, but unfortunately that didn't fix the problem. So I ran to Michaels and grabbed a piece of poplar wood, and I ended up gluing it to the back of my warped background piece with wood glue and laid that under a heavy cutting board to set. After that was set, I glued the truck piece to the backing and set that under the heavy cutting board as well, and thankfully everything was straightened out after that. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty close, and I'm just glad I didn't have to cut any more wood. I also glued all of the letters together and glued the remaining details to the puzzle backing, making sure to set each one beneath the heavy cutting board or with clamps. Finally, I used a clear gloss spray to seal everything in, protect the paint, and make it nice and shiny. I did several coats of this spray, but I didn't film any of that part because it was pouring rain all weekend and I was standing out in the rain reaching into my little garden shed to spray the puzzle. I was happy with the final result, especially considering how many things went wrong. I think it turned out pretty great. My nephew exclaimed, BIG TRUCK when he opened it and promptly dumped the pieces out and put them back in, so I would call that a success. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later!